Okay guys, let's go ahead and put together the Sharpie attachment for the Flat Burner 3. You should have your wood parts. Uh, you should also have your pens, your bars, and bushings. And you should have plenty of hardware screws. I'm going to start with the wood parts. Scoop them out. Each part should have a label on it. Okay, and this is what they should look like. I just laid them out so we can take a look at them. Okay, what we're going to do first is we're going to build the actual pen holder. And we're going to need parts A2, A1, and B times 2. You're also going to need the four bushings. You're also going to need some glue. What we're going to do is take a little bit of glue and we're going to glue these bushings into these corresponding recess areas of A2 and A1, just like that. So we want to be careful we don't get any glue inside the hole here. We're just going to run a little bead around this edge. It's not real important to make this very strong because it's only holding the pen. You can see the glue I have on here maybe. Go through and do that for all four of them. Now it's next impossible to not get glue on that inside hole, so I am going to have to clean it off a little bit when I'm done. Okay, so I have these glued in place now. You might be able to see I've got a little bit of glue on the inside there. I'm going to go through and clean that out real quick. Just going to use this rod. I want this to float freely. And make sure if you use a rod to clean it off. See a little bit of glue got on there. And just look down in there and get all the glue out that you can. You don't want any glue getting drying in there. Okay, so while this is still wet, oh, and make sure you clean the rods off. Okay, while these are still wet, I'm going to take my B2 times 2. This is what they look like. I'm going to glue them right on here. And you notice that they have a, a hole here and like a, a tab back here. This is actually for a rubber band for future use uh, as well as this is. I'm just going to go through and glue a little bit on these tabs. And with this hole facing forward, this is the front of the part. Put it in just like that. Pick it up there and show you. It should look like this. And we'll do the same thing for this back one. Now make sure that your plastic pieces face each other. In other words, I'm turning this around and they're going to be pointing at each other. Just like you see here. And I'm going to wipe off this excess glue. Okay, with this piece still wet, as a matter of fact, this is the top piece. It's an A1, and you notice it has uh, the side tabs on it, and A2 does not. So this is going to be our top piece. I'm going to set this to the side right now. I'm going to bring in C2. C2 also has two tabs that actually match up with the ones on A1. 
we're going to take our two included rods and we're going to press them down into this recess. I'm not even gluing these because I might need to add, depending on if this rod is short or not, I may need to add a little bit to build it up. So for now, I'm just going to press it on there. And I'm going to take my assembly here of A1, A2, and B times 2. And with the tabs on top from A1, I'm just going to slide this right on here. Be careful not to push the plastic pieces through. You may have to hold them on with your thumb to get them started. Okay. Looks good. We're going to take part D. This is what it looks like. And it's basically going to sit right here in this slot in the back. Just like that. Now I'm not going to glue this because I want to be able to take it apart and adjust it later. So I'm just going to set it in there uh, just like that for now. Okay, we're going to locate C1. This is what it looks like. And we're going to line up our recess holes here with our two shafts and the slot here with the tab here. I'm starting at the tab and I'm just going to look underneath here and kind of move it around until I get it aligned. Now you can press it together. Try to get it lined up. Now you may find at this point that with part D here, it should be flush, like you see. And you may find that one of the rods doesn't fit all the way. As a matter of fact, I can look here and see. I'm not sure if it's coming up in the camera. I can see that rod is short, so it's only short a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually take this back off. And I'm going to build this up a little. Pull this rod back out because it pushes it down too far. So it's going to take a little bit of glue and fill these holes. And this should help take up some of the space. I'll wipe this glue off the edge. Once again, don't push them down, just, just get them started, really. That's good. Now, when I put the glue in there, it really kind of blocks all the airway off, so it really does make it tight, but that'll hold it in place. The other thing is, make sure you wipe off any excess glue you have around that shaft. That looks pretty good. Slide our A assembly back on. Make sure your tabs are to the top. Make sure you put your finger on the plastic piece so it doesn't pop out. As so you're trying to work it on there. And you got to kind of go at the same time with it, like that. Also, keep an eye back here. I'm noticing that D1 tilts in a little bit. It was tilting in and, and blocking me from doing that. So. Okay, that looks good. We'll take C1. We'll place it back on top. I'm not even going to put glue in there. Um, the screws should hold everything together. Just going to try to press fit these holes back on here. Kind of squeeze everything gently together. Um, doesn't have to be perfect because our next step, why the glue is still wet, is we're going to take part E. This is what it looks like, and you'll notice it has recess holes back here. That's the back side of it. And you'll also notice that these tabs here are closer to the bottom. This is the bottom half. 
So you want to spin this around so your recess holes are facing, just like you see here, I've got them facing down towards the table. The recesses are on the back. And I'm going to work these tabs here and here into these holes here and here. Now you can only go down so far because these tabs actually push through the back. So you want to get to a point where you can push them in evenly. Just like that. And that will help square things up. The main objective here as you're building this is to make sure that you have, you have it dropping freely, just like this. You want this to drop as free as possible. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to go through with my hardware screws and the square nuts. Here's what the square nut looks like. And I'm just going to insert it into these T-slots here. Now you guys can put a piece of tape on there if you want to help hold the, the nut in place. Uh, I'm taking my screw and on the back here where my recess holes are, and I already have the nut in there, I'm just going to push this in, get it lined up a little bit. And I have a little drill here. You could use a screwdriver, but drill that in place. Once again, it, it should go flush. You can see it pull in, and you don't want to over tighten it. So I'm going to go through and do that for all of these. There are four of them total. Okay, that looks good. At this point, the Sharpie attachment is ready. All we really have to do is let it dry. Um, and then it's ready to go. Now, I've added a few things here. I've got some holes here. If we wanted to use a smaller tool, we could put a smaller tool in there, and the object was to be able to add some type of a strapping here so we can hold it. Um, perhaps an X-Acto knife that can swivel 360 degrees would work. I also added these back here, and the idea is that you can easily grab these with a rubber band if you want to and pull around there to to hold it in place. Just a simpler way to do it. Uh, I've considered putting a hole back here because it, if we did a rubber band around there it would pull this whole assembly tighter and you would get less play because these bushings are not a perfect fit on there. You do get a little bit of movement but uh, we're not out really for the uh, precision. It's just a lot of fun to be able to uh, place this on the gantry of your flat printer 3 and just do all kinds of really cool artwork. These side tabs here, the idea behind that was if we did use a different tool, say a, a, an X-Acto knife, um, we would want to add a different amounts of pressure so we could add springs here or we could add rubber bands um, and that would help tension this down. Whereas the Sharpie, you really don't want any extra weight on it. I'll uh, show you how we install the Sharpies with your gantry all the way up. Uh, once, once you have this inserted into your gantry piece, you'll put your four knobs on there to hold it in place to lock this system in. And then you will take your Sharpie. The way I usually do it is I hold this up with uh, one hand and I push the Sharpie in from the bottom up and I kind of hold this top plate as I'm doing it. And you'll see it gets tighter because the Sharpie has a, is a tapered fit there. And then I can pop the cap off and I can actually put the cap right back on the top sometimes if I push it up high enough. And that's basically it. That's your Sharpie holder. You can do some cool artwork. Now, I'll show you one of the things we did. Uh, the other night we did this was uh, just a DXF drawing. It was a line drawing. But one of the cool things about this was that we were able to we were able to use a fine tip marker on this one. And I can show you here. There are some sharpies. They look like this. It's called the twin tip. 
not sure if you can read that or not. But it has the normal Sharpie marker on one end that has a fatter tip. And then on this end, it has a fine tip, which is really cool. So we use the fine tip to do that little chick. We've also done larger artworks. Okay, so here's uh, one I just finished doing. This is a different type of board. It's an Elmer's, an Elmer's board. I got it at Staples. But it's got a real shiny texture to it. You might be able to see the light uh, glaring off of it. And it's kind of cool because it gives you a nice sharp image. Now, this was a tank tread that I took a picture of and converted it into a DXF file and then had the machine follow that DXF input, which is really cool. I wanted it to look real rough looking and it came out really good. So you can see here I have my Sharpie attachment on the machine. This is another one. And normally what I do is I after I have my material in here under the pressure rollers, I usually turn this pulley and bring the gantry up close to the top. And then I can lift this up and even push down on the pen like this, get it to come down like that. Now, the twin tip uh, Sharpie here, that takes a little bit more effort. You have to, uh, if, you're, if you're trying to use the fine point anyway. You have to kind of find that magic spot. And I leave the cap on to where you can just push it in, is what you're trying to do. Push it in one and then push it into the other one. And now you have the ability to use the fine tip. Uh, it takes the place of the standard cutting tool attachment that comes with the flat burner. It also has the same keyway on the back that interlocks with the face plate. And when it's not in use, it actually can lock onto the side of the machine here. Another example of some Sharpie artwork. Went through, did the yellow first, then did the black, and then we put the cutting tool on and actually cut out the uh, entire side, which was very cool. Uh, here's a skull that we did as a test cut. A couple different colors. And we've just been going to town with it. It's a lot of fun. Little F22 flapter. I did all the Sharpie artwork on it first and then cut it out. Came out really cool. And so this is just the beginning. We hope to start offering some different attachments. You see here we have the Bosch Cult router that can attach to your flat printer and give you some real cutting power. This will be an awesome upgrade. So we look forward to seeing all the cool things you guys come up with. Okay, so that pretty much concludes the Sharpie Attachment Build Logs video for the Flat Printer 3. Uh, I want to do a shout out to S. Craig Hamilton on the flat form for sharing this design. This was a community project of building different attachments for the flat printer. Uh, this is just the beginning and we can't wait to see what you guys come up with and look, really looking forward to seeing your artwork. So thanks for watching.